All right, let's go ahead and get more up close and personal with this thing. All right, let's start from the beginning and turn on the unit. Here's the power button here. It says feel really quickly for about half a second and then it automatically turns on. It may be difficult for you guys to see because of the refresh rate, but way up here it says how many kilohertz the sound is coming out in how many bits so it's automatically always going to say 48 kilohertz 16 bit if it's not connected to anything you just power it on uh, there's a timer and that's turned off and then it shows you uh, how much battery is left it's battery display there in this thing it says auxiliary this is uh, the mode that it's in change the mode by pressing this input button so now it's on USB mode uh, coaxial cable optical cable and back to auxiliary because this is what we're using to connect with the uh, special plug I think this plug is called the E9 I already lost this thing in my pocket uh, I'll show that to you guys later here this 30 this is the audio level once you plug this thing in to your iDevice you will no longer be able to use the volume button on your iDevice you have to use this one so it goes from 0 and it goes all the way up to 60 but I set a limit on mine at 36 so that it doesn't accidentally go beyond this and the moment I turn some music on I blow out my ears and deafen myself so I set a max limit to 36 but it goes all the way up to 60 and even 36 is just about more volume than, than you're going to need if you're going well beyond 40, then that's ridiculous, crazy loud. I couldn't even begin to tell you how many decibels that is and how much you're going to damage your ears. So don't, I, I don't like to go beyond 34. Even 32 is loud for me. If I'm just trying to keep it quiet and I don't want any leakage out of my headphones, I just keep it on 30. 30s all right so you have all these buttons over here it's volume up volume down menu we'll press that later hold is you switch that down so that you can press anything and nothing's going to happen it's just going to stay on hold so that when this is inside your pocket with your eye device you're not accidentally going to turn up and down the volume or change your settings. So let's turn that hold off. So let's go into the menu. Max volume, I said I have it set at 36. So now I'm inside of the settings for the max volume and you see I changed it all the way up to 60, but I'm now it's gonna go beyond 36. Let's go ahead and change that back down to where I hit it. 36. Press X to go back to the menu. Volume memory. The moment you turn off the device and turn it back on, it's always automatically going to go back to 20 for the volume. But if you have this volume memory on, if I turn it off at like 36, for example, when I return back on the power, then it's going to be at 36. So I like to keep my volume memory on. Go down again. System firmware. I checked the website so far. There isn't any updates for that. Uh, this is very nice. The EQ settings that you could change. You could change uh, the treble and bass. I try to make it sound as 
natural as I possibly can because I already have some demon headphones that have their own like equalization type thing. So I try to balance it out for what I'm using. So I change my treble to six and my bass to four. But I think this goes to either plus 10 or it can go to minus 10 for both the treble and the bass. Balance, this is right ear, left ear cup. If you want more volume in one than the other. Gain. Uh, this is just standard flat. This is gain six is kind of the normal setting, I guess, that they recommend. And then 12 decibels more. I'll leave it on six. USB charging on. So you plug this in with USB. It's either going to charge or not charge based on whether you have that on. Sleep mode. Now we're just recycling through all this stuff again. The max volume, volume. So let's get out of that. All right, so that's that's that. Go ahead and plug this back in for you guys. All right, let's do this from the beginning. Get my eye device here got this cable that plugs to the proprietary 30-pin uh, connector here. Go ahead and put that in. Here's my FIO unit. I'm gonna go ahead and put them back to back like this. If you can see the bottom, this is a proprietary connector for the FIO, uh, USB in, and auxiliary. So you go ahead and bend this around and put this inside of the auxiliary. The reason that you would buy this cable instead of using the 3.5 to 3.5 millimeter that comes with it is because this is going to have a cleaner audio signal coming directly out the deck of the iPhone plugging into this rather than going from this 3.5 to this 3.5 and it's not an entirely clean source. All right, so I have those connected. I'm only using one band, but I got two. So you take this band and just squeeze this back on here. And it's going to tether your units together. My headphones no longer go inside the iPhone, but it goes where this headphone logo is on the headphone amp. Go ahead and get something going here. Right. Shaft is what I'm listening to. So this volume button down here no longer works. This thing doesn't slide anymore. Now the audio is coming out of here. But I have it on the wrong input mode. Now it's on USB. We need to change this to auxiliary because that's where I have it plugged into. All right, it's a pretty, pretty nice sound. A lot better sound than just listening to the iPhone stock. Uh, some problems that I have with this unit. When you don't have music playing, when you have your music pause, sometimes I can hear some static noises. Not sometimes, it's pretty often I can hear the static. But as long as you have audio playing, then uh, that static, you won't hear anything. But it's just kind of um, a nuisance to listen to that when you want to pause your music for a bit, you know, you need some quiet time, but maybe you still have your headphones on and you hear that, that noise, it's just, it's annoying. So like I said, this thing is not 100% perfect, but for the price that I paid for it, 
Wait, I'm thinking 18,000 yen, Japanese yen, which is about 180 US dollars, I would say. The build quality on this is very nice. It feels like a quality device. Uh, which is that? I'm guessing it's brushed steel or uh, it can't be steel, uh, maybe aluminum, brushed aluminum. Because it's very lightweight, but very nice touch and texture. Very nice holding this thing. I love holding it. You have that brushed aluminum there. It's a very good look. All black. The display is beautiful. Maybe it doesn't look that good to you guys because of the refresh rate from my camera, but in person, it looks it looks beautiful. If you show this to somebody, I think they'll be impressed with it but it's not all about the looks, right? It's about the sound quality that it delivers. For just a headphone amp, it does great. You change the equalizers to uh, give it a more richer sound based on your personal preference. If you can spend $200 more, go ahead and get a DAC that is compatible with your iPhone and that also has a built-in headphone amp and that'll sound a lot better than this. Uh, Fio, I checked out their website. Website is really shit. Takes a long fucking time for that website to load up. English on there is really terrible. I don't know who they had to write that for them, but uh, they need to get their business practices up real quick and uh, I mean this is a quality device but you know judging by what the website looks like and that this thing is made in China it makes you wonder about how long this thing is really gonna last you is it another cheap made in China product or is it something of quality only time will tell yeah, not sure yet about uh, Fio, the company. Like I said, the website is terrible. The English on there is laughable. Make sure you go and check that out. Everything loads really slow. And Fio says the reason that this is not compatible with your iPhone is because they don't know how to get the license from Apple. It actually says that on the website. Well, if they actually had somebody that could speak proper English working for their fucking company, they could just send Apple an email or just contact the headquarters and just ask about licensing. You know, I don't think it'd be that difficult. There's a brand new company that I mentioned earlier, Fudu Tech. It's a Japanese company, been around for about a year. Well, this Japanese company, they got the license from Apple to use the proprietary DAC. I mean, to uh, plug in and have compatibility with that. So I don't know why Fio can't, can't do the same thing. And Fio's been around a lot longer than Fudutech. So they're just giving excuses. Maybe they don't want to pay uh, the fees, the licensing fees to Apple or Maybe they just don't know how to contact them, but like I said, they need to get their business practices up. And that would make me have a lot more faith in the company and their devices. But, you know, you get what you pay for. This thing is cheap and it, it does a pretty good job for what it is. What am I gonna rate this? Uh, my maximum score for everything is five stars. They have no license for this. Static. I give this a two and a half out of five stars. If I'm feeling generous, I'll give it a three at best. And that's my review for the Fio E11. Hope you guys enjoy. If you want it, pick it up. I mean, it's a lot better than just a stock iPhone. Go ahead and get it. If you got more money, $200 more will get you the proper thing that you need to really start sounding good on the go.
that's my review thank you guys for watching don't forget to like and subscribe to this video and i'll see you guys next time